Hello, and thanks for tuning in. As always, this is Reverend JR, and today we're gonna learn how to pray, apparently. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Number one, do you really need a pop-up bubble to tell us who you are? Number two, So today's video is going to be like my first episode, like, 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 of my Christianity Basics 101. Christianity Basics 101, eh? Like where women are supposed to be quiet and learn in all subservience, rather than being teachers. Continue. So I get a lot of questions and comments about you guys asking me to just touch on the basics, just touch of Christianity and just like, 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 just like the basic stuff that we don't really talk about because I feel like just touch, it's kind of given, but sometimes it's not and people are like, wait, why do we do that? Anyway, you like get the basic like idea like that the, she's gonna like tell us like about the like Bible and all the basic like stuff like that's, you know, like in it. Here's a normal breath. And now here's the kind of breathing people do on YouTube. <gasps> Did you hear the difference? I'm not even cleaning this clip. I thought it'd be a really good idea to just start off with the basic concept of prayer. And that is something that is very easily overlooked. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So as long as you believe in God, he will do whatever you want. Because he bends his will around you if you believe in him, I guess, rather than exercising his own will. Pray without ceasing. When you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. So you're supposed to pray without ceasing, and you're supposed to do so behind closed doors. So what that means is never leave your room. Except, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So you actually have to go into the room in secret with everyone else that you want to pray for, so you can confess to one another, but still not know that you're praying, somehow. And you're doing it constantly, so you, you can't confess your sins to one another, because you're already praying in secret where no one is, all the time. As I desire then, that in every place, the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. So, God doesn't want you to just pray behind the closed doors that he told you only to pray behind. He wants you to pray every place. And these are just the basics. They're completely contradictory. They don't make any sense to say one then the other, and then expect you to do both of them. But let's see how you get around this conundrum. But it's something that is so important for you to have a relationship with God, 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 because without prayer, which is basically a conversation. No, it isn't. In a conversation, the other person interacts with you. You are just having a monologue with your hands. How are you going to have a relationship with him? So if you are new here, thank you so much for stopping by. Right, squad fam, squad fam. Before you leave, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. I thought this video was going to teach me about prayer, but apparently it's just teaching me how to fish for likes. Pride goes before a fall, someone once said. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Just touch. So I don't really know where I'm going to take this. I was hoping you guys would be able to help me out. Christianity Basics is what you're calling it. This one's about prayer. Can we get into it? With that being said, um, my hair is curly. And when my hair is curly, I do a lot of this. So I'm going to try my best to not do that because last time you guys said it was really distracting. And the makeup I'm wearing right now is the makeup that my mom did on me when I used her makeup bag. But anyway, as long as we're going to be watching this girl with no head covering engage in vanity some more, we're never going to get around to talking about prayer. So. We've heard enough about how pretty she thinks she is. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I think the first thing to establish here is how important and how blessed we are to be able to talk to our God. Well, see, there's the thing. You said earlier you could have a conversation with him, not just talk to him. I mean, I can talk to the President of the United States. It doesn't mean I'm having a conversation with him if he doesn't know I'm talking to him. I can talk to Harry Potter all day long. It doesn't make him real. 
even if I think he's talking back to me. We have the ability to talk to God whenever we want. And like, that may sound super stupid at first, but you have the ability to talk to our God Almighty. Like, you clearly ran this through a video editor and you clearly adjusted your audio somehow, but you didn't remove the, the, that noise right at the bottom. And you also decided to leave this in. Like, doesn't that just sound amazing? The high pitched squeal and the that alone should really blow you away and you should be like that should really like humble you and just put in perspective how important prayer is let me tell you guys you are just so blessed that you can tweet at pewdiepie that's that's what it sounds like you're telling me prayer is right now it's just a forum that goes one direction Obviously, obviously, to have a relationship with someone, you need to talk to them. So God has to talk to me if he wants me to have a relationship with him. Good to know. This might be news for some of us because sometimes a lot of people are really bad with communication in a relationship. If God ever talks to me, I'll be sure to let him know to talk to me more. God is very bad at this. But for you to have a relationship with someone, you gotta be able to talk to them. I agree. One of these days, perhaps your God will show up and have a relationship with me. And talk to them freely and openly. Hey God, if you're there, come on down. Come on down! Let's have a chat. I, 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 don't, I don't think you are. About everything and all things underneath the sun. So your God exists below the sun. Under the sun. Which direction is under the sun? So... Basically, you should be able to talk to God about all of these things. So you're saying the reason I have to talk to him is because he doesn't already know everything. Prayer is something that people tend to overthink. I'm responding to your 14 minute video on the topic. I think you're not thinking about it enough. If it is really the way to talk to your God, and we have to do so to get into heaven, then I don't think it's possible to overthink it. But then again, I don't believe that I have to pray. So you might be onto something and overanalyze, we like to put structure onto things. We like to make things formal and we like to make things proper for them to be correct. The first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, whatever you want to call it, are literally the five scrolls, the books of law. The entire Bible is founded upon the idea of laws and structure. If you pray wrong, you don't go to heaven, according to the Bible. Keep that in mind. Because you seem to think doing whatever it is that you want to do will get you into the biblical heaven. But the Bible says no. The Bible says you must follow those structures. And here you are telling people to ignore them, basically. The same thing an atheist might say, oddly enough. Anyway, well, let's not think about that too much, I guess. Well, there's no correct way to pray. According to the Bible, that is wrong, though, because there are multiple different correct ways to pray based upon your station in life and the attitude you should have based on what you're praying about and various other aspects. It's almost like you haven't read this book and you just want people to feel good about themselves and hope they're doing it right, even if that won't lead them to the God you claim to believe in. Do you understand why that's infuriating? The Bible literally has the Lord's Prayer that shows you the way you should literally pray, given by God's command, and yet you claim there is no correct way to do it. You're saying that God got it wrong, basically, and that God is incorrect when he tells you how to pray, how to tithe, how to do all the things mentioned in the Bible. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm an atheist. I agree, there's no right way to pray to a thing that doesn't exist, but you seem to believe that thing exists, and we'll send you to hell for doing it wrong. Carry on. There's no correct way to say things that do things that are more powerful than the other. In Luke 18, verses 9 to 14, we'll find the story of the two men who went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and one was a despised tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. If I don't cheat, I don't sin, I don't commit adultery, etc., etc. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. 
Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner, etc., etc. And God says, The sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. There is actually a wrong way to pray, according to Jesus. Now, let's just hope that makeup tutorial at the beginning of your video was sufficiently humble to justify your actions before your God, I guess. It's just a basic conversation. A prayer is nothing more than you and God talking to each other. No, as we've seen, prayer is actually you admitting to God that you are the flawed creation that he created. That's about it. We're only about three minutes into your 14 minute video. If that's about it, then you made the video entirely too long. It's you and God talking to each other. You have an intimate conversation with God. Before I make this video, before I make any of my videos, I always sit in prayer, and I always like to prepare myself, obviously, spiritually. And today, I watched a Francis Chan talk. And one thing that he talked about was intimacy in prayer. Intimacy is when you and another person love each other without having a selfish agenda or it all being about you and your needs. Intimacy is when you care about someone's needs above yours, or you go out of your way for this other person. So when is God going to worry about fixing my problems, I wonder? Or maybe God isn't intimate after all, like you seem to claim that he is. Let's see where this goes. So when we talk to God, it should be an intimate conversation. It should be about us talking to God and not us just rubbing on our little genie bottle and being like, Hey God, I want this, 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 and that. So you're saying I should worry about God's problems. I should ignore what the Bible says about asking for things in prayer. And I shouldn't expect God to worry about my problems, even though he should be putting me above himself. I think a big thing that our society has made prayer into is wants and needs. All of these right here on the screen, plus a great many other throughout the Bible, say that if you ask for something, God will give it to you. Luke 11, 9-13 even says, For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? The Bible says very clearly, God listens to everyone, well, except in John 9.31, where he says he doesn't listen to the sinners, except all these other verses where he, you know, says the sinners are the best ones to pray. And he will give the person who asks whatever they ask for. This has nothing to do with society. This is literally what's in the book. We love to make God our genie. That's because Jesus literally says that God will give you whatever you ask for. We love to make him a Christmas list and send it his way, and we just love to make our prayer about what we want. That is something I'm very guilty of, and when I first started my relationship with God, that was something I would do all the time. It's like, hey God, like, can you help me out with this? Or, hey God, I got a test. Can you make me remember all the answers? Hey God, I really want that person. It was so cute. I don't have the finances. Can you make somebody jump into my life so I can buy that Gucci bag? Like, this was me. Like, <laughs> pray for me, please. So even though the Bible instructs you that that's exactly what you're supposed to do, doing what the Bible tells you to do makes you a bad Christian. Do you understand why I might not be inclined to agree with your interpretation of this old piece of paper. I sped that up 1000%. Basically, she's saying, prayer is just a conversation you have with God about things that are going on in your life. Basically, a personal Jesus. Basically, what she's doing to the camera right now. She's praying to the camera, letting us know how her day went and things that happened in it like God is some kind of diary who doesn't already know what's happening in your life. But no, prayer is about asking for things and being repentant in the Bible. Those are the two functions of it. Repenting for your sins and asking for things, not just having conversations. This is why the Catholics do confession in a box where no one else can hear you. And I felt so at peace and so connected with him because I was just constantly interacting with him. When I would pray, it wasn't my needs and my wants. It was just me talking to him about my day, the good and the bad, just an overall like conversation. And yes, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel weird. You're just sitting there like talking to no one. So you know that you are talking to yourself. You claim it's a conversation between you and God. But you also claim it's weird because no one's actually there. Do you understand the contradiction? But during those times was when I really heard God's voice. Then talk to God in front of this camera so that we can hear it also. Please. Because your God isn't talking to me. I asked him at the beginning of the video. He hasn't responded yet.
Because every time I would pray, I would always be in quietness, no music, no distractions, nothing around me. That's when I would hear God the most. God whispers to us, he can't talk to us when we have so many distractions and so many other things going around. Why though? You mean to tell me, when I'm having a cookout and I got music on in the background, your God can't talk to me, but the real person standing next to me can. He always whispers to us. So during that time of prayer, I was really touched and really heard what he was saying to me. And that was so important because I could really just focus in on what God wanted me to be doing and not what I wanted to be doing. So God literally whispers to us and we can hear him if we're very quiet. Let's try. Hey God, how's it hanging? Today I worked on a video. Yesterday I had a cookout with some friends. How are you doing today, God? Hey crickets, get out of here. I want to hear God. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video because God isn't talking to me, so I can't test if her prayer style actually works. If you enjoyed this, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about prayer. Feel free to share this around with all your friends. I'd like to say thank you again to my single patron. And as always, this has been Reverend JR signing off.